Welcome everybody to Railroads Online. My name is Windev. This series is about the end game where you have laid all your track and you're doing operations. Uh, we've got uh, miles and miles of track laid, 200 hours plus into the game at this point. Uh, as much money as you need, as many engines and, and trucks and stuff that you need. Um, currently we're sitting here at the sawmill uh, the world is quite big. Uh, there is um, lots and lots of loops is the way it's put to describe it. Um, everything is a dedicated run. Uh, lots of dual track through the middle here so that uh, particularly for multiplayer uh, you don't have issues and also so that uh, it reduces the amount of switching that's required. And there's various loops where uh, you don't even have to change a point, like for example, between the sawmill and the logging camp, there's a dedicated like circle. Same thing goes between the sawmill and the iron mine. And a lot of other places are actually more like throughs, where you go through something and out the other end, loop, for example, at uh, like the coal mine, you can see the loop here, loop all the way back, come all the way down, and then, for example, float from the coal mine, you need to get to the iron works, for example, round, loop, around the loop and then back again. Um, so what there's going to be is an episode per loop, if you want to say that. But for example, uh, we'll start off with, we'll be at the sawmill and we'll go to the logging camp. Now you'll notice that you're not really seeing that many logging, you know, uh, yards type of thing here to hold trains. What I've tended to do is focus on keeping trains so that they are um, in dedicated shunt lanes that are on the way. So for example, uh, there's t an into this area here, and then an out, and then this goes onto the main line. And so basically, that these two trains are parked here, and there really is never going to be a third train. There's no need to run another train because for most trains, I have a dedicated set of trucks, and so there's an engine designed for the particular purpose based on grade or the weight, and there is um, a set of uh, trucks up behind it that are uh, appropriate for the load. Um, so let's uh, have a quick little walk over to the sawmill and you can sort of see the main line on the left here. Um, I try to use ballast as much as I can. I'm a, um, I don't want to go much further than like waist height when it comes to ballast. Um, above that height I tend to use stone wall and then above that it's trestle and then if absolutely needed we use the steel uh, bridges. Um, this whole sawmill area really is my hub and you can see all four trains, there's four trains parked here. As I said the left hand side one is a big class 70, it's used for the iron mine run, oh sorry the coal mine run, that really really far run and goes all the way up down to the bottom of the map, top of the map to the smelter then back down to the iron works and up again. So, Really long haul, uh, big trains. Next to it on the sideline is just my little looping train, the Porter 2 that goes to the iron mine. And it's just, its job is to deliver just the lumber. It does not bring back the coal because the coal does not need to come back. Uh, so it doesn't bring back the iron because the iron doesn't need to come back to this part of the map. Uh, right in front of us is the really end game um, train. This guy is used to bring back the barrels right there in the corporal car in the middle and the spare tools in the boxcar and it's preloaded with its lumber ready for that final run. Good old Betsy sitting here. Uh, she, her initial purpose of the game is was the logs and she still does the logs. Um, and then, um, yeah, there's lots of loops. So right now we're in a situation where everything's all filled up. You know, so I tend to leave my trains full of their loads and Betsy's the same here. Uh, at some point uh, the log count got low and um, this was pulled forward and unloaded and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to continue that process. Now this logging pond right now has 70 in it. Um, I've rebound my unload to the U key. Um, you can see that on top left corner. Um, so that's going to give us the 76, so we don't drown. Uh, 82, that right? 82, and then we're going to end up with a couple of spares. Now this train has 12 carriages on it, um, so we are currently stop checking when numbers. Where's my numbers? Yeah, 82. 
um, get the point. So this is going to give us up to 88. Um, 94 and just by pure chance um, yeah by pure chance this actually is going to end up with a 100 um, and there's going to be two left over this is very common for what um, I do I'll, unload for, I'll go off because we've got really low and unload the first five and then we'll be in a situation where maybe or maybe not the next five will need to be unloaded or they'll, they'll sit there and then the last two will be there um, because we're not in a logging situation, uh, I would then move this forward ready to unload it. Um, but if we're in a situation where, and we're in that now, where this pile is getting low, so these guys are fine, but there's hardly anything in the middle here. There is only four out of the um, 32. Um, I'll use those spare ones right here. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to quickly uh, jump into Betsy, move her forward. And we'll unload those ones. Give Betsy some gas. You got this, Betsy. Um, I tend to turn the cylinder clocks on in the yards. Oh, sorry, I'll hit the bell once um, for some realism. Um, to remind myself that I'm in a situation where there's tight corners, and there is tight corners here. You'll note that this I'm not merging onto other tracks here. This is actually is an isolated loop because. Um, Getting logs is really, really common, and um, having a way of just quickly running off and getting uh, logs without having to worry about points is great. So I'm just watching the back of the train here. As long as there's really long trains, they're really hard to see. Um, this is 12, as I said. Um, it was 12 because the old loading style at the logging camp was 1 and 3, 2, 4, and so it was 3 sets of that type of log uh, loading. But um, around New Year's, um, it was changed so that uh, it's a 1-2 load system now. So that's not the biggest problem. Uh, the water tower I know is it kind of at the front of the uh, of the platform, so I'm using that to guide myself. And you'll see later that I'll, I'll make uh, there's little marks on the ground, and you can see one over here. Um, what this is is just a bit of a piece of ballast set quite low. And what I'll do, so it's just done like this. Um, what I use, I use that for is to line up. So this spot here will be five carriages from the front. And I also happen to know that this all lines up here. So let's uh, quickly unload you. Unload. Oh, it looks like there's a bug right now where you can't unload. Okay, that's weird. Um, okay, so yeah, I would unload it here. We're just going to ignore that right now, and um, we'll, we'll drive with the with the, with the logs on the load. That's kind of strange, isn't it? But uh, that was kind of right. It was it needed to be a little bit more, so I'm actually going to make that marking now. Um, and so it was needed to be about there. So I'll just remember that for the future. Double G to get your um, crosshairs back. Uh, the new hitbox for um, the engines to go into the first bit, the F mode, whatever you want to call it, is down by its uh, gear works. Uh, if you try to hit the boiler, it won't activate. So um, if you're struggling to jump into F mode, uh, that's, that's probably what the problem is. Uh, y is used to get rid of the UI, which is why this is there. Now I'm keeping my speed down here. Now you notice that the ballast is a little bit high here. That's because there's a hill here. And just to make that gradient um, not too impossible, I believe it's like one percent there. The cross had to be a little bit higher, and that's what caused this whole area to be slightly higher than normal. Now I need to keep my speed down. Now I've re rebound um, the regulator to one and two. I found that having it on AS WASD was a little bit dangerous, or confusing at least. And so I like to—I've actually changed the binding to one and two, and that works really well for me. Um, so when I first designed this, um, uh, this train peeled off to the right hand side to get to the, um, uh, the logging camp. Actually, I saw that right there, you can see up there, there's a, there's a remnant of, uh, huh, there's some, actually some old track that you can see out there still. Um, 
The reason why you can't just go straight out is this hill. So you only have to go to the right or to the left. And if I put the map up and zoom in here, you can see it right here. Uh, this little hole here um, causes um, uh, the problem. And so I used to go out here and, and around for one track, and then I used to come back through here. But when I changed the whole world to dual track, it would make sense to be a consistent look and feel and have this uh, as dual track too. And so you can see the loop, it goes up here, around, um, around the loop, and then we're going to go up across the, the logging camp. Um, we're losing the audio as I uh, touch the map program, so sorry about that. Loop in, get our logs, go around the loop, and come back again. Uh, the abnormal one that you might have noticed is this line out here. I actually have a direct line between the logging camp and the smelter. Um, and so that's what this additional one is. So it comes around, goes around the, the teardrop, before it goes around and then back off again. And so there's really two loops here. There's this loop without any points required in normal, you know, to go around and around and around. And then this uh, slight modification to the points when the cord wood train uh, comes in. All right, so Betsy's... Uh, got out into the wild. We've uh, just slowly got out there. I'm going to slowly ramp up the speed. I've seen a lot of people uh, break their trains by um, ramping up quite fast. Uh, there's no reason for cylinder clocks anymore. We're in a, in a straight zone. Um, running her at 50 gets her to high speed. Um, I have my audio set to 50% in the game options. Um, hopefully it, it means that it's not too loud. So in this case we're going out on the right and back on the left. Uh, it's kind of a uh, reflection of just the way the logging tracks lay out. The, the logs are on the right hand platform, so that's the way that the loop works. When I'm doing the iron mine, for example, uh, it's actually done. I have a yellow range. So there's no real you know, British versus US is outside the road being down. Bess is a great little train for this. Uh, she, she gets along quite well. And when this stonework started, is where a 1% grade started, um, maybe even a 2%. Um, I've seen a couple of people go up on the right hand side here, like in this hill. And you could actually put you know, one track over there and come back on the other side of the valley, you can say it. Um, the only reluctance I have to that is when coming into the yard, I want to be flat. So when you're doing shunting, and when you're there now, when you're doing shunting, you don't really want to be on a hill. And so um, the benefit of having these two trestles that come straight out and kind of like cross the valley quickly and make this very like watery type effect, it's like a dried up lake situation. Um, is it kind of does look a little bit realistic, but it also does give you a nice flat shunting surface. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be coming up through this area up here to the right. And it is a bit of a struggle to keep on climbing and climbing up through here and then curve in um, at an appropriate time. So the um, this yard has um, an, an artifact of the original game. This is where the original firewood depot was put. Um, with the idea that you know, I used to jump backwards and forwards and drop them off and, and this used to be the home base. Um, it doesn't have the biggest use right now, but it is used for the train that comes into the other track. The corporate train that comes in over here uh, will use this to gather its wood. Um, but that, that's not too often. So we're just going to coasting equip uh, slowly. So this used to be a 1-3, um, 2-4 type drop off where yeah, you'd you're loading every second carriage or every second truck but um, it actually now um, um, is a one two and so uh, that makes it it does make it a lot easier particularly for single players because it's you know not as much of a stretch between the left and the right uh, quickly looking at the map you can see what where we are right now um, the um, we're coming in here, we're picking up, and then we're going to slowly pull forward and then we'll leave out coming out this way. Okay, the train is loaded. Um, I've uh, given some Betsy some uh, firewood, so we are good to go.
slow easing out of the yard. So this is a teardrop shape, pretty simple. Uh, the radius is not too uh, not too tight. I've gone as wide as I can. There's a, uh, a ravine back here, and this other track used for cordwood to the smelter is right on the limit. And so both of these um, have been really pushed out as far as really they could go. Probably maybe could have. Um, on the left hand side here brought these out a little bit further over this way to arc it in even, even more if necessary but I do like this straight run through here right now and Betsy does a good job here I've never really had a derailment problem um, I'm going to bring it down to 10 not too fast nice and steady particularly as um, you go towards points. Now points themselves don't have a, um, a really a speed problem but you do tend to get these weird kinks as you lead up to it and in fact this is not my finest work of really lining this up. Um, in the future if I find out that the firewood station only takes cordwood which I'm guessing may be the truth because it looks very cordwoody in the unload point. Uh, even though it's got a log here, as it is, it's all three, so uh, it would suggest to me that it should unload everything, but if in the future that ever becomes a cordwood only unloading situation, the firewood station, what I'll do is I'll take the last two carriages off of this guy, this 12, and make it 10 log cars, and then I'll put two cordwoods on the end, and then I'll upload them up here. But um, yeah, I'm not sure why the unload didn't work at the firewood station. So uh, we're going at 10 right now. It's going to bring up to 20. Ease it down this hill. This is all, all flat through here, these two bridges, um, particularly for this reason. Turn off the uh, cylinder cocks. Um, that's not really needed anymore. Um, even though this is a downhill, we can kind of push it a bit harder. You can see the kink there where it goes down. Now this one, the one on the right is flat, the one on the left is downhill because there's no need to load in that direction. This is the other out. Um, and down, whoops, and down we go. I'm taking it a little bit easy here because uh, there is a bit of an S nature to the bends. The only side problem you get with this uh, dual track approach is you really can't avoid having a steep side on my other side um, when it's on a hill. Um, I probably could have brought this in slightly closer but it reduces the curve radius a lot. And um, yeah, that's the concern. Now, word of warning, when you come out of these curves it is tempting to, oh I'll go straight, I'll just speed up. You really need to make sure that the back of the train has cleared the corners before you, you ramp it up. The other thing is you don't really want to put too much stress on the couples by just jumping into 100%. So, just um, going with the one fine at 40, I just slowly, you know, increment two of the time increments, I build it up to 10, 10 or 10, 20 that was running through there, and then slowly put it up to 40. Before we know it, we're going to be back at the sawmill. Um, at some point, well in the past I did actually um, have this peeling off to the right hand side. I used the, uh, the, the mini Mac website to reforest the trees and get all this back. Um, it's not the worst idea to have a line through there, um, just so that you can go by new carriages. At the moment, uh, if I wanted to get to the freight depot, I would actually have to go up here around the loop. And then there's a point on, on the left hand side here that allows me to get onto this other track across here and then that goes back to the freight depot so if I needed to add carriages to this the other thing also I could do is I could switch across here and then back through this one um, for the same idea um, but that's the loop of the logging around you'll notice that there's no real no other point where no other real there's no point where um, other main train lines need to really come on and off of it which means the switching is consistent now normally um, this would be a little bit emptier um, and I would actually probably um, 
give it the first five. But what I'm going to do right now is just take this forward a bit, make sure I pass the cross, which is up here. Um, I have a mark on the ground down here of where that is, um, which is right there. And so I'm just going to ease past that and pull out a day. Alright, I'm going to just quick double check that I'm correct. Um, I'm pretty sure I am, but that's the point for that. Yep, that's easily easily past that point. So there you have it, that's a logging run. And just out of interest, I'm just going to quickly see if I can do an unload. Not, nope, I can highlight it, but I can't do unload. Uh, the unload icon doesn't turn up, so it seems that despite this having a log, a lumber, a beam, and a cordwood on it, um, that's a bit glitchy right now. So, um, but in the future, that's how I would unload those. All right. Next time, what we're going to do is those logs get turned into beams and lumber, and the primary reason for them, as a pair, is to go to the iron mine. And we'll do that with our second train that's sitting over here. Um, so that will be the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.